Hello everybody, this is Budrich, new video, Vivaldi Rising, installing VB4C, let's start by doing that. Uh, VB4C is, uh, it is like the backbone of uh, my, my browser Rise here, and what VB4C is, it's Vim bindings for Chrome. It's an extension, which is a fork of CVim. And it's a very new fork, it's just like three weeks old, uh, this fork, so it hasn't uh, been approved by Google yet. And it's not available in the Chrome web store, so you cannot install it uh, the normal way here. Instead, uh, you can follow these uh, instructions here, or you can follow the instructions I will give you, which is clone this repo to a good location. And I have prepared this a bit with a directory here um, so let's open that directory and clone it to this location git clone url and let's call the directory source there you can see we cloned it to source here when you have done that you can open uh, extensions window or tab or whatever to call it here in vivaldi or chrome because remember this also works exactly the same in chrome um, clip that thing, load unpacked, and then select uh, the directory where we uh, clone this repo, which we clone to this source directory here. Open, and there, now we have installed uh, an unpacked extension. Or, you know what, let's remove that. I, I just came to think of a thing that I really want to do. Uh, can see here is the source now for for the repo um, but I like to uh, create my own branch in case I make modifications and stuff so I have like a, a one branch that's true to the original source so let's start by doing that navigate to this directory and then we do a git check out b buds there now we have a new branch called buds that's just how I like to do it. As you could see, it works. This is, whoops, wrong key. You don't have to do that branch thing, but I did. Okay, now it's installed. Uh, let's see, I made, a, made some notes here uh, because it's so easy to get sidetracked. Um, enable dev mode for extension, install extension. Wow, we've done half, half of the show. <laughs> Create custom start slash new tab page. What I mean by this is that uh, VB4C, it works like this. You can hint links and, and uh, click them without clicking them, clicking them with the keyboard. But another important feature is that you can bring up the current URL like this, uh, modify it if you want to, or just press O. Yeah, what I did first there was capital O brings up the current URL and then it will change the current page here to this. You can also do T to open a new tab or capital T to open a new tab and you will have the current URL pre-filled in like this. Uh, but the problem here with uh, Chrome, Chromium, uh, Vivaldi and I think also Firefox have this convention now that extension does, doesn't work on built-in Pages, for example, the start page here, which is uh, some kind of a built-in page. Uh, here we cannot uh, hint anything or anything, and also this uh, address bar is uh, highlighted by default here, so it's kind of hard to do anything, anyways. Uh, but this is also true here for the extension page itself. It's also a built-in page, and here we cannot press T or F or anything. They simply just don't work. There are, I have seen uh, in the deep um, archives uh, of the Dirtac library people who have um, done some modifications to the Chromium source itself uh, to whitelist certain uh, uh, extensions. So, so you could do this. But I have never tested that myself and it's kind of, let's not get into it, then whatever. Let's just say that it's not possible to have... Uh, these extensions uh, uh, available on the built-in pages. But what we can do is create our own uh, start page and new tab pages. 
uh, and then it will work on those. So let's start by doing that here. Let's create uh, pages and then we can call it uh, dummy.html and we just create a new page by doing this and dummy and h3 i am friend hello save that um, and then we can copy the url here also this open vivaldi open the settings and then we change here home page specific address we enter the URL to our file, but what we also have to do is prefix uh, or URI, I guess. We have to prefix it with file colon slash slash. So it should be file colon slash 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 home and then your home directory, whatever, you get it. Set this, also set start up with home page. So you don't have start page, you don't. Home page is this, start page is home page. And then you should also set tabs here, new tab page is also home page. So now, now all, everything points to this uh, uh, specific page. But you could also have different pages for your start page uh, and the new tab page here. But whatever, let's keep them the same now. And if everything worked here, now we can see my beautiful web page I just created there. We should move that here. H2, oops, it works, save, new tab, it works, cool, okay, and this also means that now uh, we could uh, open uh, CVIM or VB4C as it's called now, and it works on, on these uh, custom pages. But one annoying thing is that when I create a new tab, it always uh, focus the address field here. I, I think that's a default setting, but you can change it here by changing tab handling to focus page content on new tab. So now when I open a new tab, the page has, has focus and it, uh, we can immediately start using VB4C. Great. Uh, And now comes uh, the tricky part of this video here, because VB4C, uh, it, uh, it have a lot of uh, settings. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Uh, this is the help page, which you can get to by just typing colon help whenever you feel lost. And then it will open this help page. Um, Describing all the variables and key bindings and example configurations and all the stuff you can do with this. We, we will uh, take, we will not go through all of this at all now in this uh, video. Uh, we will just focus on loading and external configuration. And that is <laughs> more than enough, en enough, trust me. Uh, first, we need to go to the settings page. And you can do that either by clicking the extension button and selecting settings here will take you to the settings page but you can also um, type colon settings will bring you to the same place and here you can enter your own uh, configuration overrides uh, to this CVIM uh, program or extension and there is like a, a example configuration here where that is good to just reading this part and seeing how to set variables and stuff it's 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 just good um, but what's even better and i wonder if this is not the reason i don't remember why i picked this uh, cvim as it was called back then but i remember i, I evaluated a, a couple of different alternatives and i landed on this is the best one I think one reason is that you can use an external uh, configuration, meaning you can have your config on like this. And here I have the, these uh, base variables or settings that we need. We we'll paste them here. I will add a link uh, in the show notes to probably a GitHub repo with uh, the files you will need here and stuff. 
So first we set this home directory uh, let and then home directory meaning we uh, add a value to this built-in variable and it's a variable accessible only for uh, cvim here or vv4c uh, and you need to set this uh, otherwise tilde will not expand uh, properly so it's not like the most important thing in the world but it can be nice to do that because sometimes you never know when you want to use the tilde you know but if you set this then the tilde will work uh, this when you create a variable with uh, two at symbols in front of it that means you create like a special variable that you can access inside commands like uh, it's kind of hard to, to just uh, dive into this but we do that anyways and uh, there's a lot of things going on here but this is a custom variable that I create myself here I could name this whatever I want but then I have to yeah you get it but this is an important variable that we have to set now if we want to use a, a local file because you have to set this let config path and then the path to where your config is stored and this is the location where it's stored you know you can see it here um, and when that special variable is set then you can also do this set and, and notice here this is kind of confusing but sometimes uh, it's set and sometimes it's let um, but when you have a config path set then you can set local config and that means it will load uh, a local config instead of using this configuration we have here but we actually have a configuration have here but we really in, in one way we don't whatever so when you have set this um, config path and local config and then I also add a, a key binding here control shift R uh, that will uh, reload uh, the, the config it will source the config file and that reminds me that we also should um, disable the, the default key binding here control shift R sometimes you need to do this uh, to not uh, get unexpected behavior so if we go to keyboard of course you can change the key bindings here if you don't want to override control shift R I don't know but I like to do that uh, and then we can find it here control shift R force reload of page I, I still have it on control F5 so there it's removed and we save and now you will see that uh, if I add a comment here for example more comments save this document it doesn't update the page here immediately but i can just refresh this page and it uh, have the more comments uh, added immediately but a weird thing about this and well it's not that weird really is that if i try to edit this uh, here edited in web ui and also this uh, quotation marks that notes a comment it's like the most stupid way to note uh, uh, comments but whatever it's been save now we get an error you're not allowed to save to modify this when you have a local config set um, but that's just fine you know because we will use our uh, file here instead and that's much better and we can just reload we never have to edit the, the, the source here and the reason is because this is a terrible terrible there, there's no like syntax highlighting nothing here and if you press the tab button which you kind of do all the time when you create these configs it will shift to this CSS window here and this CSS window is just as you m might expect where you can configure the CSS for uh, the bar uh, this thing you know and also some hints and stuff you can uh, change the colors of, of, of those it's not that much CSS here but also super annoying <laughs> look at this you cannot change these last lines here really it, it, it's such a bad <laughs> bad bad design here um, but the worst thing worst of them all here is that um, yeah we also I can never save here now because I have this but this is also true if I want to change the, the the CSS here if I change this color variable here to magenta and save I'm not allowed to save that either because of, for some reason both of these are at the same place 
and there is not um, a, a good way to load CSS locally. You can only load uh, these uh, conf configurations locally. So if I want to change the CSS, then I have to uh, unset this and reload, and you cannot really rely on what, what, what you really did and stuff, you know. But now it's saved here, and now uh, the URL or the bar should have a different color. I don't think it does. I think we also have to reload F5 here and reload. Now we can see this is the magenta color. This is the element I changed. But we cannot have this, you know. Then you have to go back and forth. And uh, uh, I dug around a bit in the source code here for the extension. And I think I found a, a, a way to, to um, work around this. What we do is we set use local config here. Save, reload. Now this is the local config. Then I created, or then I copied these uh, default uh, styles here, the default CSS, and I saved it into style.css. Uh, and what I found out is that you can also set this secret uh, variable here called command bar CSS in all caps. So if we set this in, in our uh, config here, let command bar CSS is equal to Arne was here, save, and then reload here now. Now we can see we've got a new variable here, command bar CSS, and that also overrides the CSS here. So this is how you override the CSS. Uh, and now, of course, we don't have any styles here. Now we broke everything because we replaced the CSS with a Swedish uh, name. Uh, so what you want to do is add the CSS in, in this string here. I haven't found, or I have found a way, uh, but you have to write it in one single line without any new lines. Uh, and <laughs> that, that, that gets uh, a bit cluttered. If, if Let's leave it at that. But as you could see here, I copied the default CSS here and I created a script that will uh, create this uh, line for us or replace this line if it exists. So here we have this script um, vb4c-add style. If I execute that script, took 19 milliseconds, we look at the config file. Now we can see we have the whole CSS here as one long, really, really long line, but it works. Uh, and now if I reload this page, you can see we have this, it's set here as the command and it is set as the uh, CSS. And now, now it's unreadable, the CSS in, in this box as well, but it works. And that's the, the important thing. And that means we can now update the CSS in this file instead. Uh, changing background color here to yellow, save that, but then we have to run the script every time we up, update the CSS here, and then I'm not sure if we also need to, yeah, and then we have to reload uh, the config, but now we can do that with our key binding, control shift R, uh, and I think that's enough, no, I guess we have to also reload the page for the CSS effects to take effect, it, it, it's super weird this, it, it's both the best option uh, or feature with this B VB4C that you are at least, a, it is possible to do it, but it is kind of inconvenient or to, to say the least. And this, uh, un, uh, this secret variable here, I had to dig into the source to figure out how to do this. But it works and it works good enough. And, and it's really nice to be able to have this as a, a separate file. And when you have this set up, we will never ever ever have to open this page again settings and that's great um, yes uh, i think we end this uh, video here and in the next one we will modify the the css of uh, vivaldi try to hide this title bar maybe tidy this up maybe Maybe we can even hide the, the address bar somehow. I have some IDs here. I think I will do it a bit differently than I had, uh, that I previously had. But we take that in the next video. Um, 
I just wanted to install this VB4C as soon as possible because yeah, if we hide the address bar, we kind of need something like this as a fallback. And also remember, it will never work on these internal pages. So when you end up here and want to change address, either you just have to switch tab or close the tab with the Control W uh, option um, or Control T to open a new tab. Thing is, when you are using this VB4C, you very seldom create new tabs like this. Instead, you just use uh, this to create a new tab, you know. And that means you will more or less never see that uh, new tab page. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, maybe you learned something, maybe you got confused, maybe you, 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 whatever. Have a great day. Bye, bye, bye.